This video is about a uh, theorem in planar Euclidean geometry, which is quite well known, called Napoleon's theorem. There are various other postings on this, but I hope that this one will be a particularly clear and easy one to follow. The name Napoleon's theorem is due to some appearance in the, the literature in the 19th century, but there is no uh, clear uh, reference or uh, source in which one can attribute it to Napoleon. So it's uh, the case is out whether it has anything to do with Napoleon, but it's usually referred to as Napoleon's theorem. Um, it's a very uh, nice result, and I'll just state it in words first, and then we'll look at a picture. So it says that for any triangle, the triangle that is formed by joining the centroids of the exterior equilateral triangles on each of its sides is itself equilateral. So just to look at the picture, what this says is we take an arbitrary triangle. In this picture, it's A, B, C. And on each of the three sides, we erect an equilateral triangle. So on B, A, we have B, F, A. On A, C, we have A, CE and on BC we have BCD, they're equilateral triangles. So all of the three sides are equal for each of them. This, these three sides are equal, these three sides and these three sides. And then we cho choose the centroid. We identify the centroid of each of these equilateral external triangles and join the three points, we're calling those P, Q and R, join them to form a triangle. And the statement of the theorem is that that resulting triangle, uh, PQR, is always equilateral regardless of the shape of the original triangle ABC. So that's the construction. Um, the first observation is that if you uh, join each of these three centroids to the uh, the corners of the equilateral triangle, or actually to the vertices of the original triangle ABC, uh, you are dividing the angles. This is an equilateral triangle FBA is 60 degrees. All of the angles of an equilateral triangle are equal and equal to 60 degrees. And the line that joins the centroid to any vertex uh, bisects that 60 degree triangle. So we get a pair of 30 degree angles. And similarly for uh, the join of the centroid Q to the vertex C, it gives you two 30 degree angles. I haven't joined it to the other vertex because we don't need this for the construction, but we do need these two. And also in the bottom triangle, in the equilateral triangle, if you take the uh, centroid P and join it either to B or to C, it divides the 60 degree angles into a pair of equal 30 degree angles. That's the first observation. The second is if we, um, since the centroid is the geometrical middle of this completely symmetrical triangle, if we uh, take the perpendicular bisector of each of the sides of the equilateral triangles, they pass through the centroid. So in this case, this is a segment of the perpendicular bisector RU. So the, uh, the, line, the side BA is bisected by the pair of lines BU and UA, and the angle RUB is a right angle. And similarly for the other centroid, if we uh, take the perpendicular bisector, we have a triangle, just like this triangle, which consists of 30 degree angle, 90 degree angle, and of course the complementary 60 degree angle, same over here, 30 degree, 90 degree, and 60 degree. And the same for these uh, triangles here, the perpendicular bisector, this is 90 degrees, B, S, P, um, is 90 degrees in the corner is 30 degrees, and in this corner it's 60. And finally, uh, C, S, um, P is also a triangle with 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 60 degrees. So that means that each of these lines joining the centroids to the vertices of the original triangle, uh, R, B, Q, C, and, um, and B, C, and 
uh, sorry, P, C, and P, B. Um, those are all hypotenuses of a right-angled triangle. And uh, that means that uh, the, uh, that means that the ratio of the base, for instance, B, U would be the base of the triangle R, B, U. U, R would be its, its uh, height. And R, B would be the hypotenuse. So that means that the ratio of the base BU over BR um, is the cosine of the angle 30 degrees, and that is root 3 over 2. So we have this ratio, cos 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, and that's equal to the length of BU um, over the length of RB. And by the same reasoning, uh, that's also true for uh, uh, BS uh, versus... Uh, the line PB, which joins the other centroid to the same vertex. So that means that these ratios are root 3 over 2, but BU is one half of the, uh, of the side BA, and BS is one half of the side BC. So that means that the ratio of um, AB, the full side AB, to the... Uh, to the line RB joining the centroid to the uh, vertex is we multiply by two and that gives you a, a square root of three. So the ratio of AB length to RB length is square root of three. By the same argument, uh, if we take the, uh, uh, the, the uh, line joining the centroid P to the vertex B, that's PB. And if we take the, uh, the side, uh, uh, BD, it doesn't matter if BD and BC are the same. We take the side BD, that's also the square root of 3 times um, the length of PB. Uh, so that, and we can do the same thing similarly on the other side. So AC, this line, this side, is equal to square root of 3 times the line joining the centroid Q to C, and CD, this side is square root of three times the line joining this centroid to PC. So all of these are, are now uh, in the same ratio. Now we'll put in one more construction line, namely join the vertex A of the original triangle to the vertex D of the equilateral triangle on the bottom. That divides this picture into two parts the left-hand side is illustrated in red, and the right-hand side is illustrated in green. And now let's look at one side. Let's look at the red side. There are two triangles here, a big triangle A, B, C, and the small triangle R, B, P. And from what we just computed in terms of the ratios of the sides to the lines joining uh, the centroids to the vertices, uh, it's going to follow very quickly that these two triangles, A, B, D, and R, B, P, are in fact similar triangles. In other words, they have the same angles, but one is a scaling factor bigger than the other. And that follows immediately because, first of all, to have similar triangles, you can either show that all the angles are equal, or you can show that one of the angles are equal one of the angles uh, um, is equal, and the and two of the sides are in the same proportion. And that proportion is the scaling factor which relates the two similar triangles. So we have that in this case. We've actually shown that. Because, first of all, let's look at the, ang the triangle RBP. Uh, the angle RBP is actually the same as the angle ABD in the large triangle, because they both consist of adding 30 and 30, which is 60 degrees, to the internal angle of the original triangle ABC at B. So this ABC angle plus 30 plus 30 is equal to the same thing as the internal angle with 30 twice on this side, because the two add up to 60 degrees. So this angle RBP and also the angle ABP are nothing but the internal angle ABC plus 60 degrees, so they're equal. 
Moreover, uh, we've shown that this side BR, the ratio of this side BR uh, to this side BA is one over root three. In other words, AB we showed was equal to root, th root three times BR. And similarly, this side BD we have shown is square root of three times uh, this side. So this is the top side of the triangle RBP, that's one over square root of three times the top of the large angle, of the large triangle ABP. And the lower side BP uh, of the triangle RBP is one over square root of three times um, the lower side of uh, the tri uh, triangle ABD. So that means that uh, there are similar triangles. The angles, the vertex angle of B are the same, and the ratio of the two sides, the two outer sides, um, is the same. And therefore, they are similar triangles. And the ratio uh, of the large triangle sides to the small triangle sides is exactly square root of three. So that they're similar triangles, so that has to hold for all three sides including the long side RP and AD. So that means we conclude that the long side of the triangle ABD is also equal to square root of three times the long side of the triangle RBP, which is RP. So we have this equality, AD is equal to square root of three times RP. That was on the red side. Now we don't have to repeat the argument, the exact same argument, shows the same result on the green side. We have two similar triangles. In this case, the big one is ACD, and the small one is QCP. And those are also similar triangles by the same argument. And the ratio of the lengths uh, is, again, a square root of three by the same arguments. So that means we have a second equality, namely the length of this uh, middle diagonal AD is also square root of three times the side uh, QP. But what are these sides, RP and QP? They are exactly the, uh, the lengths of the sides of the uh, triangle formed from the centroids. It's two of the three, RP and RQ. If you go back to the original diagram, that's what the theorem was talking about, RP and RQ and, R and PQ. So we have RP and PQ, which are in the same ratio to the same quantity, AD, and therefore they're equal. RP, length of RP, and the QP, PQ, uh, have the same length. So we've shown the equality of two of the three sides of this triangle formed from joining the centroids. This exact same argument can be applied to show any other pair, the equality of any other pair, just by changing the diagram suitably. So instead of putting a this this full equilateral triangle on the bottom and looking at at the joins of its centroid to both sides we could do the same uh, construction on this side or on this side whichever pair we choose we're going to get a pair of um, sides of the angles formed from the center of the triangle formed from the centroids so we also have not just rp equal to qp but also uh, our uh, our uh, QP equal to RQ, so that would be this line. So not only the pair of lines RP, but PQ are equal, but also the line joining RQ to PQ is also equal. So all three are equal. And since all three are equal, it's an equilateral triangle, and we've that's the, the statement of the theorem. That's the end of the theorem.